Hello, and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. I want to talk about a news story that a lot of you have been sending me and saying, hey, what are your thoughts on this? And that is here in Edmonton, so my local town, uh, the police were responding to a wellness check. And a wellness check is basically, hey, is this person okay? Can you go have a, you know, go check on them? Uh, it's not like a 911 call from inside the residence. It's not a crime in progress. It's a, hey, we are concerned. We don't know who asked for the wellness check, and we don't know what information they provided the police. Those details were not shared. But that's sort of the level of seriousness. Anyway, the police respond to this wellness check, and this property has video cameras set up around it. The police notice these video cameras, and they reach up and they turn them so that they're no longer pointed downwards to capture what's going on. Instead, they're pointed upwards where they can't see anything. So the homeowner is actually watching this on the security camera footage and is concerned. They're, they're kind of freaked out about this because they're saying, hey, why are the police blinding these security cameras? They actually take the step of calling the police on the police, which is not usually super helpful, but I mean, what else are you going to do, right? So a lot of people have said, hey, um, can the police mess with your security cameras? Is that... You know, is that okay? Is that kosher? And the answer to that is a little complicated. There are circumstances and, you know, there are reasons why the police uh, may well need to mess with your security cameras. For example, let's say uh, they think you are dangerous. You know, you've got a criminal record for violence, especially including violence against police. Um, they think you're armed. They think you've got drugs, you know, whatever is going on. They think this is the sort of situation where they need to come in heavy. That might call for blinding the security cameras because you don't want to see people, you know, you don't want people inside knowing how you're going to be going in, how many of you there are, what you're armed with, you know. You don't want them using this to either plan their own escape or planning to ambush the police as they come in. So that, to my mind, is a perfectly valid reason. Now, there are also all sorts of good reasons why the police might do it this on a wellness check. For example, all right, so I'm being a little facetious here. I cannot think of a good reason why the police would need to do this on a wellness check. I've spent some time thinking about it. I just can't find one. It's concerning, right? Because uh, police more and more these days are going to find themselves on video, uh, you know, video recorders. There's more surveillance systems. Everybody's got a cell phone these days. And the, you know, the training should be, listen, expect that you're going to be recorded. Get used to it. Get okay with that notion. And make sure that your behavior is above reproach. Make sure that you can justify everything. You know, make sure that you are not, you know, and... You see video footage and sometimes it shows wrongdoing. Sometimes it shows uh, the police behaving well. There's a lot of video footage where people are like, hey, this officer is behaving badly. And I look at it and go, nah, no, this officer is doing exactly what, you know, what they should be doing. There's also a lot of video footage out there where you just can't tell because usually it cuts in a little too late and you're sort of going, okay, yeah, there's a confrontation happening, but why did it start? So... But police have to get used to this idea that they're going to be on video. Now, if you watch the uh, the news bit that I will link here, I'm not including it because I'd run into copyright issues. The last thing I need is a copyright strike. But if you watch that video, uh, there's Mr. Tom Engel. He's a very distinguished Edmonton lawyer. And he makes the comment that this might count as mischief. Let's go through and look at mischief and just see what that includes and see if that's covered. So mischief. Everyone commits mischief who willfully, so there's an intention requirement here. It can't be accidental. But from looking at the video, I don't think it was accidental. They meant to move those video cameras. So A, destroys or damages property. I don't think that's covered here. Those cameras are fine. They're just tilted the wrong way. All it's going to take to fix them is just tilting them back down. B, renders property dangerous, useless, inoperative, or ineffective. I mean, maybe. Ineffective, useless. I mean, it's not pointing in a useful direction here. 
I'm not super happy with this, uh, this section as applied to these facts. But C, obstructs, interrupts, or interferes with the lawful use, enjoyment, or operation of property. I think that is a winner. You know, big ding on this one. Interrupts or interferes or obstructs. Yes, that seems to be exactly what they were trying to do with the lawful use, you know, recording their own property of their property, which is the video cameras. I think they could make out a mischief here. Now, do I want to see these officers prosecuted for mischief? Not really. That one gets a big eh from me. Uh, mischief is not the most serious crime. This is a general catch-all section, which basically says you can't mess with other people's things. If it ain't yours, don't touch it. You know, don't carve your name in your neighbor's car, that kind of thing. Lots of mischiefs don't, you know, they don't typically attract a super serious sentence. And I honestly don't think these officers would get a criminal record as the result of being found guilty here. So even if they were found guilty, I think that the punishment would be an absolute discharge or a conditional discharge. But this one kind of concerns me more than like when somebody carves their name into a mailbox because this one is really getting at, you know, the police in their their business as policing. I am concerned by this behavior when I see police doing this because they should be happy for a video record. You know, if you're behaving well here, th then this is evidence that you were behaving well. Excellent. You know, are you really that concerned that it's going to show something bad before anything has happened? That's a bad look. So I, I don't really want to see them prosecuted. I also understand there's a civilian complaint. I don't have a whole lot of faith in the complaint process. It's the police investigating the police. And often they sort of find no wrongdoing in situations where I'm like, how? And also often um, when there are punishments doled out, they seem like they're really minor. Um, it also seems like the whole civilian complaint process is often a process to avoid criminal charges. So it's like, hey, this person, you know, had a gun go off because they were behaving with it negligently. Why not just charge them with the careless use? Like we have this whole process for that. Uh, so I don't have a whole lot of faith in the civilian complaint process. I don't think that's going to turn into anything. As I said, the main concern here isn't really, I don't really care about seeing these officers punished per se. What I care about is I'd like to see some sort of police response here that says this won't happen again. You know, we're, we're going to make this a teachable moment. And I don't really see that. They're sort of like, well, we're looking into it and we will, you know, we're not going to comment too much because it's an ongoing. Comp Come on, guys. Like, just tell us that you will tell your officers not to do that. Uh, this also kind of goes towards uh, security design, because if you're trying to set, you know, and lots of people are going to be limited by the construction of their house, right? But uh, your security cameras being easily reachable like that means a criminal can reach them too. So this is maybe not the best place. Ideally, if you have security cameras, you want to find a place for them where somebody can't easily reach them and disable them. Anyway, um... I'm concerned by this, but it's not, this is not top of my priority list in terms of, you know, police wrongdoing. It's, it's a thing that happened. It shouldn't have happened, but, uh, worse stuff goes on, I guess is the, the bottom line on this. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting or educational. Please like this video. Please share it with your friends. Subscribe to see more content, you know, help this channel grow. Uh, I also have a link to my Patreon below if you want to contribute. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Jason Elliott, D. Mo, Canada's National Firearms Association, North Central Process Service, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, Ivo Nedev, the CCFR, BCAMF.org, Andrew Schaefer, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Marc-Olivier Demour. And at the $20 level, Matt Ward, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich and Adam Meester. As well, there's a number of you at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge. Also, I hope you enjoyed the little gag uh, midway through there. 
surprisingly expensive. So, but uh, hopefully I'll be, I'm trying to work on sort of upping my production values. So I guess that is my first foray into that. So thank you once again. See you next time.